Okay, guys, so got a few questions about a video I put up yesterday on my first look at Alpine JS. Uh, and reiterating my first look, I have never used it before. Uh, this is was, I should say, after about five or ten minutes of having a look at it, implementing something to see how it worked in Bricks Builder, and uh, having a bit of a play. So I'm no expert. This is my first look, scratching the surface, and all I'm looking at is the reactive um, part of Alpine JS, which is what I was looking for as a difference. I uh, had a few queries about, you know, why don't you just use jQuery? Uh, and look, jQuery was a great library uh, in its time. Uh, it certainly filled a lot of holes with, uh, you know, the old versions of JavaScript where even just things like uh, getting a reference to a uh, an array of elements was uh, a bit of a task in JavaScript. Uh, nowadays, and for some time now, browsers have a more modern uh, version of JavaScript, which really, in a lot of people's view, including mine, it really removes that need or that dependency for jQuery. Uh, Bricks, being a fairly new page builder, has no dependency whatsoever on uh, jQuery that I can see. Uh, and all of the add-ons that I've used for Bricks itself uh, do not use jQuery at all. Uh, the only one that I've found that does use a bit of jQuery that I use all the time is WS Form, uh, which has been around for some time, and it also uh, isn't specifically for Bricks. It's for generally for a great uh, form builder for WordPress. So my view is if you can get your mind away from jQuery, do so because native uh, JavaScript is more than enough. You do not need that jQuery dependency. So shift your thinking to using native JavaScript instead of jQuery. Okay, so the next question is, uh, what's the difference between using, say, Alpine and native JavaScript for this simple example here? So the simple example I gave was we've got a button, we've got a heading, and we've got a text box here. And if we hit the button, uh, we get a backend uh, rest call, which returns an object uh, with a title, URL, and excerpt. Uh, and these fields automatically update here. So if I hit the load random post again, that updates, that updates. So that was my example from yesterday. Uh, what I've done to show the difference is I've recreated this using native JavaScript. Okay, so this version here, I hit random post, and it does the same thing. It goes to the back end, gets the same kind of object, updates the heading, and updates the text box. So two ways of achieving the same result. And what I'm going to show you here is the difference in how these are done. So if we look at the example from yesterday, if we look at the DOM, what we find in the DOM here is we have, and again, this is covered in yesterday, and there's some great documentation on this. Um, we have a section here. We have we're at the container. I've got a Alpine directive here or attribute called xdata which is going to pull my random post, which has my fields, and it also has a fetch post click handler. I've got a uh, at click, so that's a uh, event listener for my click, uh, which calls the fetch post function. And then on my heading, all I've got on my heading is saying uh, X text. So whenever the post title changes, automatically update that. Uh, and my X uh, uh, text here on the text box, uh, when my X when yeah when my excerpt changes, automatically update that. So this is what they call reactive. So whenever these properties here, so the post title and the post excerpt change, these automatically update. I don't have to do anything else. All I have to do is change those variables, and this updates. And just uh, to reiterate that, heading back to the original JavaScript for that. Basically, it's these. If that changes or that changes, then automatically, this just automatically updates because we're binding, using this X text, we're binding the text property of that element to that variable. And when we get the data, all we're doing is saying update those variables. 
There's nothing else we need to do. Down here is just error handling, so we could take that out of our thinking. So really, the actual bit that's doing the work is that. Our defaults for our uh, variables, fetch it, and then update the variables. That's all our JavaScript needs to do. That is the beauty of this reactive type uh, framework, uh, Alpine.js in this case. In the second example, what we're going to do is look at the native JavaScript and look at the DOM for that. And what we have here is just a standard button. Okay, so just a standard button. We've got a standard heading, we've got a standard paragraph tag, okay, which is a text basic. Uh, and what I've done on these is I've given them an ID so that I can reference those with JavaScript. There's other ways of doing this. I've just, to keep it simple, I've just given them an ID so I can reference. I've got a load button, heading, and an excerpt. Okay, there's nothing reactive about this. I need to manually update those. So if I go back to my JavaScript here, and this is the JavaScript that I use for the um, second version, the native version. So the first thing I need to do is wait for the DOM content to load. I then need to get a reference for my button, heading, and excerpt. Uh, so I've got to go document, element, uh, get element by ID, find my load button, find my heading, find my excerpt, so that I've got a reference, a DOM element reference to that. I then need a function which is going to update the heading and the excerpt when my data changes. So I've got to tell my headings in a text to be data title, the excerpt in a text to be data excerpt. I then have a function for fixed post, which we'll come back to. Down at the next uh, bottom, I've got a button add event listener, click, uh, fetch post. So every time I click, fetch post, okay? And then it calls the fetch post, does the same thing as the other JavaScript, uh, and then when I get my data back, I've got to call my update DOM data, update DOM with my data, and that calls that function and updates it. So there's a lot more we have to do. First, we have to get a reference to the elements. We then have to have a function to update those elements. We then have to have a listener for our button, and then we have to have a, in our fetch post, we have to call our update here. If we compare that to this JavaScript, all we're doing is setting our uh, properties that we want, fetching, and then telling it to update those properties. That's, that's the big difference. So we don't have to worry about updating the DOM. The DOM updates automatically, and that's what the reactive stuff is that is really cool. Now, this isn't the only way of doing this. There's many other ways. There's actually some browser APIs now for um, uh, for adding in data, uh, which we could look at as well, uh, adding in uh, DOM elements. Um, this is just a, a way of doing it for simply simplicity. Now, could you imagine if we had a lot more? Let's say, for example, in this uh, design here, that was an actual post, and we had... Uh, some meta, we had the author, we had reviews, we had all the sort of stuff coming back in that object. With the native browser one, we have to get a reference to all of those. We have to update all of those. And if we add one here, we need to add one there. And it's just more code, more things to think about, more processes. Uh, I like the idea of just change the variable, and everything updates. So that is the big difference to me with this as far as reactive stuff goes. Now, the last thing I'm going to mention is there's also been some confusion about comparing this to using Bricks Dynamic Data. And Bricks Dynamic Data and Query Loops is a completely separate topic. The Bricks Dynamic Data renders in PHP at the server level. So when you load the page, if I refresh this page here, uh, when I get that page, I'm going to get the bricks rendered data. So if you've got a query loop, it's going to render what is in that query loop on that page. So it'll all be in the HTML before you load it. This is when the page has already loaded and you click a button or there's a timeout or maybe there's a uh, push handler for messages or new content. So while you're viewing the rendered page, new information can come up. Okay, so this is doing it on the front end in the browser when the page is already rendered. You would not use this to uh, as, as an alternative to Bricks Query Loops. Bricks, Bricks Query Loops is the best way to do this initially. Uh, so this is just an alternative to that. Anyway, that's my two cents worth. Uh, that's my take on my initial look at Alpine. There is an awful lot more to it, uh, and you can build full, you know, single page applications in it if you want to. This is just a very, very slim look at something that's, I think, quite usable for 
certain cases. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that and hopefully you like this.